uh, for this week, I think I need to present uh, to you something on the introduction. I, I know that I have presented to you the introduction part, but this one is uh, the latest one. Uh, let's see, someone want to join. Okay, so student who just joining, I hope after this, after this session, untuk esok for tomorrow and other session, please join this Google Meet using the link even sent to your Gmail address that have been re registered with Google Classroom. Okay, ada yang masuk tadi saya terpaksa accept. So, tolong take note eh. Jangan uh, jangan guna email yang lain sebab akan mengganggu uh, perjalanan kelas. Okay, so um, I want to show to show you something on the introduction. Okay, I'll hold for a moment. Okay. Can you see my PDF? Yes. yes. Yes, madam. Okay. So basically, uh, this this one I have um shown to you. Okay, the introduction. Okay, saya so just nak pergi laju je lah. Ada a few parts yang uh, when I said previously, when I explain, uh, that one is not updated. That one is based on previous um previous students okay this one the entrance and exit survey okay so when you look at this so uh previously i said the entrance survey will be appear online on island or you future but now okay i have confirmed with um others so it will uh, you will have to register in the you future i think maybe some of you have already done this okay so for those who has uh yet to answer the survey please do so uh, in the first and second week okay kalau boleh buat buat hari ni teruslah okay so because this one is to measure your knowledge before the course start so kita dah start hari ni kan so better you buat awal okay and then uh, you also will answer the exit survey on the 13th and 14th week okay so for those yang Tahu, okay, so entrance exit survey will take approximately only 5 to 10 minutes. Okay, tu tak lama lah. Jawab survey saja. So for those yang tak tak buka lagi, okay, so this is the interface yang uh, you can see from your uh, you future portal ni. Okay, so you can click on my courses and then you click on session 092 foundation chemistry 1. And you have to do for other subjects too, okay? So when you click this one, it will appear like this. Uh, I mean, the nav navigation panel here. So please click on the EES, Entrance Exit Survey. Uh, if you view from the island, it's actually in a full name, Entrance and Exit Survey, but now it's uh, uh, written as EES, okay? So then you can that to answer the survey lah. Okay. So another one is this one. Okay, previously, um, I think I have mentioned about this table, but previously I think uh, it's not really uh, updated one, especially on the week. Okay, so the item mid-semester assessment, which is the, previously we call it as test one. So it will cover the cover topic one only for topic one okay so the week if i'm not mistaken you can refer back to the course syllabus and tentative schedule i'm not sure week eight or week nine but the percentage now uh, is 15 percent quite high okay 15 from 50 percent so it's quite high okay so and it's only cover topic one where I think this topic is um, more on your uh, revision when you have studied uh, during your school, okay, during your secondary school. Uh, 
So uh, I hope you can really score on this um, item mid semester assessment. And then uh, for lab, lab, okay, lab one, uh, still ODL. Uh, this one I think I have mentioned to you. So we will start um, next week. So next week we will start with SO4 first. S4, eh? S4. Lab Monday. Oh, okay. S4 and S3 lab is uh, on Monday, 10 a.m. So next week we will start with um, S4 first. Okay. Uh, this one, uh, you dah tahu kan? Saya rasa saya dah beritahu eh. Uh, even number for group uh, will be having lab on even number week for week. So minggu depan week 2 kan? So S4 lah. And then week 3, S3. We take over the lab 1, our session. Okay. So lab 2, 3 are later. This one uh, is uh, for face to face lah. Okay. I think yang ni pun later. I can explain in details about the assignment. 10% and then for the quiz, 5%. And then you have the final assessment from topic 2 until topic 5. Okay. Banyak eh. So the total is 50%. So that's why I really want you to score on this. Maksudnya awal-awal ni jangan main-main lah. Terus score for this item. At least you dah pegal uh, this mark. Okay. Because we do not know maybe the final assessment assessment it's uh, difficult for you, so at least you have scored uh, some part of your assessment. Okay, so uh, yang tadi tu lah eh. Mm, okay, any questions so far? No, sir. No, my dear. No, no. Okay. Okay, so. So now we move to our slide. Okay, first of all, I would like to ask you whether you have you watched the pre recorded video? Yes. Yes, Miss. Yes. For um, what topic to what topic? Uh -huh. Mm. Until one, one point. One point. Ada yang one point eight. At least one point three. Have you watched until one point three? Yes. 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 Okay. I hope all, all of you have watched the pre-recorded video. Even though I think if you watch that video, um, it's just like uh reading some text there. Okay, that's why I think, that's why I need to ask you first whether uh, do you need uh, extra time right now to watch again the video or you want me to just straight away go to the discussion? I have to ask to you. I have to ask you. Straight away go to the discussion. Straight away for the discussion. How about others? Is it okay? Yes. Kalau malu uh, nak cakap, you can write on the chat box. Okay. Please, I need your response. Okay. But nanti saya tak nak. Ada yang cakap, okay, um, ni tak tunjuk pun video tu. Okay. I need your response. For me, it's a bit redundant if you have already watched the video. Okay. Because um, I'm also will explain uh, again especially on the critical part tak takkan semualah kalau semua kita tak sempat that's why i'm asking you whether should i give you time to watch the video some of you mentioned that we can just proceed uh, with the discussion i mean i can explain again a little bit on the uh, topic and then we have discussion on the checkpoint. Is it okay like that? Yeah. Yes, okay, okay. Okay. Thank you for your response. 
Okay. So I hope uh, you also have downloaded the PDF uh, slides. Eh? As uh, at least uh, you can refer back to your slides. Okay. So now I will start presenting my slide. Okay, for, for a moment, can you see my slide? Yes. Yes, we can. Yes, miss. Okay. Okay, so for the topic one, okay, um, it seems like uh, the subtopic is quite many, quite a lot, but I think it's even for today, we can finish up to uh, 1.3, okay? So, because uh, the critical part is, uh, I think, from 1.7 until 1.11. That's why I think if we can uh, push uh, uh, the subtopics up, so at least we can have many discussion on this part. Okay, so maksud saya kat sini, uh, it's not really... Um, that maksudnya macam ni tak semestinya saya akan follow that particular week on the tentative schedule okay but that one you can uh, itu kita sebagai kita punya reference lah okay but sometimes if I think that we have enough time to explain on other subtopic saya akan bawa naik ke atas so that's why I prefer to you to watch the video um Maknanya one step ahead. Let's say for the week one, supposedly is it is until 1.4. Hopefully you can watch until 1.6. Okay. Um, but um, if tak sempat, tak apalah. Okay, so saya akan explain uh, later lah. But for this uh, this one, sebab masa saya ada kelas tadi uh, for one hour, Saya memang discuss 1.4 and 1.5 together. So I hope uh, you can read lah for uh, tomorrow kan? Kita ada kelas lagi. For tomorrow's class, hopefully you can watch the video at least until 1.5. Kalau you dapat sempat baca until 1.6 lah. Okay. So, so for 1.1 1 .1, uh, is actually the uh, postulates on the Dalton's Atomic Theory. Okay, so basically, first of all, may, may I ask you, uh, do you know what is the meaning by postulate? Apa maksud postulate eh? Don't know. Macam theory. Okay, theory. Lagi? Suggestion. Suggestion. Okay. Proposal. Proposal. Idea. Idea. Okay. So postulate is more on assumption. Nah, dia satu assumption. It, it is not a fact. Okay, kalau fact ni, we know that fact is um, something that uh, it has been proven. Dah dibuktikan through the ex, uh, experiment ke, by research ke. This one is just assumption. Okay, so <coughs> Dalton's uh, assume the atomic theory, uh, the atomic is like this, like this, like this. Okay, but uh, his assumption um, are, I mean, can be used uh, as part of the theory of the atom. Okay, so kita dah terima pakai lah uh, his assumption. That's why we call, we still, but we still call it as postulate. Because it's really difficult to study on the atom, right? Okay, so we just follow uh, from his um, assumption. Okay, so ada lima ni lah. The to total assumption from him is uh, ada lima kat sini ya. Eh? Okay, so and then the structure of atom. Mm, okay, this one I think you, you have learned so many times. During our school, so the structure of atom, so we have nucleus and electrons. So in the nucleus, 
uh, comprised of protons and neutron. Okay. So, uh, satu per satu pendek je kan? So, at 1.2. Okay. So, this is the standard nuclear notation. Um, I've been informed that you are, uh, also have been introduced with this um, standard nuclear notation eh. Dah biasa kan macam ni. Okay. So, just to... I think this class is more on revision lah, to revise back what we have learned previously. So X is the chemical symbol for the element. It can be atom or anion. Okay, Z is the atomic number or we call it as proton number. And then A is the mass number or I know usually before this you call it as nucleon number, right? But I think for now, please uh, use the terms mass number okay because if you refer to the international book uh, they uh, all use the terms mass number okay even though the the meaning is the same but the terms we use is mass number and i think they have some correction just a minor correction here a is the mass number the number of protons plus the number of buka or eh? This one, number of neutron. Yeah. Okay, number of proton plus the number of neutron. Okay, so I need to tell the very simplest atom. It is a hydrogen. We have uh, one mass number and one atomic number. So in that case, because this is a neutral atom, so the electron should be equal to one. Okay. So uh, ion, you tahu lah kan? So if it if it is ion, so the proton number twelve, so the mass number twenty four. Automatically, we know that the electron will become ten. So the twelve because this is a positive two. So, maknanya dia kekurangan. Okay. Less electron. So, the electron will become 10 electron. Okay. So, I think isotope, you also know that uh, the definition of the isotopes where the atoms of an element with the same number of proton but different number of neutrons. I know someone, uh, someone, sorry. Many students, actually, when we ask for the definition of isotope, they always... Um, yeah, use the terms uh, different numbers of nucleon or different numbers of uh, mass number. I know it is right, but for me, um, the correct one, the because uh, you have different mass number due to different neutron number. You have different nucleon is due to the different number of neutron. That's why for me, the correct one, uh, the definition of isotope is when atoms of an element with the same number of protons but different number of neutron. This one, eh? Okay? Allah. Okay. Boleh, eh? Ni kalau dia tanya soalan berkenaan dengan definition lah. Okay. So, now we go to the checkpoint one. Okay, before that, uh, okay. Actually, I'm trying to use Jamboard. Have you ever heard about Jamboard? Pernah dengar tak? No. no. Never. No. No. Okay. No. Sekejap, ya. Yeah. Actually, saya dah pernah try dengan previous class. Uh, banyak student boleh masuk tapi okay. Tapi ada juga student tak boleh masuk So okay saya try je Tengok you all boleh masuk ke tak I post to the chat box eh okay, Try join this jam board Saya dah post dekat uh, chat box Boleh join ke tak boleh join Okay, yang dah join. 
can you uh, use your pen? Boleh conteng-conteng tak? Saya tak conteng macam saya conteng ni. You choose the pen on the left side. Ada navi ada ada two box kat tepi tu. Boleh eh? Semua boleh tulis eh? Okay. I actually I prefer this uh, Google Jamboard for uh, macam discussion for checkpoint or tutorial. Cuma um, the problem is in my previous class uh, tak semua student boleh masuk. So I nak tanya ada tak student yang tak boleh masuk? Ke semua boleh masuk? Kalau boleh masuk Alhamdulillah kita boleh continue with the Jamboard. Kalau tak boleh saya kena tukar. Boleh hmm. ke? Tak boleh dia kata sebab ramai sangat tengah try nak buka benda sama. So dia macam jam. Hmm. So the same problem lah ni maksudnya. Okay sekejap eh sekejap eh. Okay. Okay so uh, for those yang tengah conteng-conteng kat jambot tu. Hmm. Boleh stop sekejap tak? Kita try uh, let other people to come in first. Yang tengah conteng-conteng tu. Stop sekejap. Kita nak try tengok boleh tak yang tak boleh join tu join. Boleh tak? Ah, tak dapat jugalah. Saya tak boleh. Uh -uh. Okay. Uh, Farha seorang je ke atau uh, ada lagi a few students yang tak boleh join? Amar boleh ke tak? Tak dapat juga. Tak dapat. Zul Farha tak dapat. Okay. In that case, uh, okay. Unfortunately, I think we still cannot use this Jamboard. I think maybe we can use this during our uh, tutorial session. Boleh eh? Uh, okay, yang kat Jamboard tu keluar balik. Hmm. Baru nak conteng. <laughs> tak apa nanti kita boleh conteng dekat uh, tutorial insyaAllah lah uh, So terpaksa lah Saya guna try Traditional Ni tapi sebab ni saya seorang je lah yang boleh conteng Okay sekejap eh I present my screen now Kenapa tak ada pula screen saya ni Sekejap ya Okay, can you see uh, file apa saya buka ni eh? Pain, betul? Nampak tak? Saya tengah buka pain. Nampak. Nampak. Nampak miss. Okay, nampak pain saja kan? Tak nampak benda lain? Ya. Yeah. Sebab saya sebenarnya tengah buka nampak. banyak banyak tab tapi saya nak awak nampak pin je. Kalau banyak sangat tab nanti opening. Okay. So now uh, I hope you can refer to your slides. Maksudnya simultaneously lah eh. So uh, now we want to discuss checkpoint number one. Okay. So I hope you can see what I'm writing right now. Checkpoint one. Question number one. Okay. So um, the question is find the number of protons, electrons and neutron for change color oxygen 16, 8 and also oxygen 17, 8. Okay. So uh, uh, the question asks for proton, electron and also neutron. Okay, so I need your response for this. What is the proton number for this oxygen? A. 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 Okay, A. why is proton A? A. Okay, actually what we A. are referring to the, the bottom number, right? A yes. is the proton number or we call it as atomic number. Okay. 
It is similar lah. Okay, so proton is A. So, how about the electron? A. 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 Same as proton. Why the value is similar as proton? Because number of proton is equal to number of electron. Uh, why why number of electron is equal to number of proton? Because the charge is neutral. Ah uh, yeah, I want that answer actually, because uh, this oxygen, okay, this oxygen is actually a neutral atom. Okay, so that's why number of electron is equal to number of proton. So how about neutron? Eight. Eight. So Eight. the cal calculation should be sixteen minus proton. So it's equals to proton, right? Okay. So how about this one? Uh, seventeen eight. Proton. Eight. 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 Okay, so question number two. Okay. Question two. Complete the table below. X is not the actual symbol of the element. So we have X. 2 minus 34 and 16. Again, what is the proton number? 16. 16, 16 electron? 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. Okay, macam mana kira? 18? Uh, 18 plus 2. Plus 2. Okay, because it has extra electrons here. It's anion, right? So negative 2. So you have to add with a proton number. So that's why the uh, the value is 18. So neutron is equals to 24 minus 16 equals to 18. 18. Ah, anak siapa tu? Okay. Okay, so question Three. Question three. Okay, so we have W two plus with uh, twenty electrons and we have twenty neutrons. So at the same time, we have G minus. We have twenty electrons and. What? Eh? Nineteen. Nineteen. Nineteen neutron. Okay, so write a complete symbol in the form of X. So, bila kata in the form of X, maksudnya dia nak notation eh. For W, atom W and atom G. So, atom W. So, what is the, uh, what should we put here? Bottom. Proton number. Right? So, what is the value for proton number? Twenty two. Twenty two. Twenty two. Why twenty two? Because uh, it, because it loses two electrons. Uh, it mentioned here the electron is twenty, but it is cation. So cation means that it has less electron. So electron kat sini dua puluh. Maksudnya you have to add another two electrons for the proton number. Okay. So how about a number here? Kat sini apa? 20. Eh, eh. Um, 42. 42. 42. Uh, because 42. this is the mass number. So mass number is equals to proton plus neutron, right? Sure. So 22 plus 20, 20 is equals to 42. 42. 42. So should be 42, 22. Okay. How about G? 19. G? 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. In this case, 20 electron and this one has extra negative charge. 
So you have to remove one lah for the proton number here. Okay. So how about the mass number? Thirty-eight. 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 Because you have neutron and proton, so actually nineteen plus nineteen, right? So it is equals to thirty-eight. So this is for your mass number. Okay. So boleh lah, kan? Okay, faham eh? Okay. So I presenting back my slide. Jap eh, saya nak usahkan dulu. Okay, so now we move to 1.3. Nah, sekejap je dah masuk ke 1.3 kan? Okay, so uh, for 1.3, uh, it is more on the chemical formula and nomenclature. So I hope you know what is the meaning for nomenclature eh. Nomenclature is actually naming. Okay, so naming according to the IUPAC system. So IUPAC stands for International Union uh pure and applied chemistry if i'm not mistaken lah okay so we follow this iupac system okay so basically we have two compound where uh, two compounds okay where uh, it is an ionic and also molecular compound which is covalent lah okay so even for ionic itself we have a few uh, steps for naming okay the very basic one is binary ionic compound. So first of all, I would like to ask, what is binary ionic compound? What is the meaning by binary? Anyone want to share? Salah pun tak apa, cuba je. So, sorry? Related. Limited. Related. Related. Okay, lagi? Ada lagi nak bagi contoh? Two. Two parts. Two. Okay. Ada lagi? Um, dua yang opposite. Okay. Two opposite opposite uh, atoms lah eh. Okay. Uh, so uh, basically betul lah tu. Binary means that two. Two different um, element of or atom combined together. Okay, we call it binary. Kalau lebih kita panggil poly lah. Poly tu banyak kan? Macam you buat polymer kan? Polymer means that banyak. Okay, so this one is binary. Ada dua. So for ionic compound, we have um, met, uh, ionic compound for invariant charge and also for variable charges. Variable charges eh. Meaning that for invariant charge, uh, you will use metals um, with a specific charge. Maksudnya dia tak akan berubah. For example, uh, for metal group 1, group 2 and also aluminium from group 3. Okay. So to name this, uh, basically you have to name the metal kat depan tu. Okay. Initial, at the initial part, you name the metal uh, as it is lah, follow the metal name and then you followed by uh, an ion, you change uh, the ending by IDE. Okay, so I think ni pun you tahu je lah kan maksud dia. So yang ni tadi ya, eh, invariant charge where we, we said that the ions can only have one possible charge. Maksudnya kat sini tadi macam saya cakap lah, if you have lithium, lithium plus it will not become lithium 2 plus or lithium 3 plus ke. Dia memang specific, will only remove one electron. Like for example magnesium, magnesium 2 plus. Cannot be magnesium plus or magnesium 3 plus. Dia bukan tak boleh. Nanti later you belajar in chapter 2, it actually can be but it's not, not stable. Okay. Hmm. Yang tu kita akan belajar dalam topik uh, on chapter 2. But here, uh, nak cakap yang stable, yang dia memang akan kekal uh, with one charge, 
is from group 1, okay, group 1, group 2 and also group 3 is aluminium. Okay, so for anion, very simple. For example here, nitrogen will become nitride, oxygen, oxide, fluorine, fluoride and so on lah. Okay, so example, let's say you have cesium uh, and fluorine. So cesium is metal from group 1, fluorine is anion, apa? Uh, group 17. So it will become anion, so from group 17, so cesium fluoride. So you just combine together, it will become cesium fluoride. Okay, so, so look at this checkpoint, checkpoint 2 and checkpoint 3. So name the ionic compound form from each of the following pairs of elements. So between bromine and strontium, what is the possible name for this compound? Can you give me the answer? Strontium bromide. Mm. Even though you have, you have bromine, you have to know that strontium is the metal. Okay, so when you have strontium as a metal, strontium can you look at the lah. Okay, and you have to check strontium is actually from group, group what? Which group? Group 2. Group 2, right? Ah, so, strontium is from group 2. So, you have to, we know that this is invariant, it has invariant charge. So, you just name it as strontium bromide. So, bromine will become bromide, IDE lah. Okay, oh, sorry. So uh, for B, potassium and sulfur. Potassium sulfide. Potassium sulfide. S U L F I D E. Yeah. Okay. Checkpoint three. Name the ionic compound for A, K three N. Calcium nitride. Okay. K is potassium. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Nitrate. Uh, calcium, yeah. Calcium actually, um, the old name. Kita tak pakai sangat dah calcium. Okay, now we are using the potassium. Okay, so uh, make sure you put potassium as K lah. Ha, macam sama juga eh. If you put potassium like this, lagi you letak P pula kan. Itu so, salah eh. Okay, so potassium nitride. Okay, how about AlCl3? Aluminium chloride. Okay, this one simple lah eh, aluminium chloride. Okay, so so far okay eh? Any questions so far? No. no. Okay. Okay, so that one previously is for invariant charge. So uh, as I have said uh, previously, uh, ionic compound also have variable charge. Variable meaning that you have um, charge more than one. Okay, for metal. So, dia punya rules dia, beza satu je. Where? Yeah, sekejap. This one. Okay, so um, you still name uh, the metal here. But now you have to put the uh, in between. Uh, metal and uh, non-metal is the Roman numeral in parenthesis. So parenthesis means that bracket eh. So it indicates the charge. So kalau charge dia tiga, dia letaklah tiga. Kalau dua, letaklah dua. In Roman numeric. Okay. So this one eh. For example here. So chromium Cr2 plus. So it's chromium 2. Ni nombor Roman lah ni. Cr3 plus chromium 3. Okay. So Fe2 plus iron 2, okay. Uh, but in this case, eh, ada pembetulan sikit for your slide, this copper. Cu plus copper 1, Cu2 plus. Previously, I think it, it is Cr kan? Saya lupa. Cr kan? So you take note lah kat sini eh. Some uh, typing error here. Supposedly it is Cu2 plus for copper. Okay, so <coughs> in this case, you have to know how to write the Roman numeric number. Okay, I think 1, 2, 3 is very easy. When you start 4, 5, 6 and se seterusnya, uh, make sure eh, you know the indicator V, huruf V ni, this V is equal, is 
meaning it is 5. Maksud dia 5. If you put 1, 4, 1, V, it's, it is 4. If you put V, 1, it is 5. 6. Sorry, 6. Yeah. Aduh, aduh, sorry, sorry. Okay, V1 is 6. Ini 5, ni 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 macam tu. Okay, 9, 9 macam mana? 9, uh, X lepas sebelakang dia tu ada 1. Oh. Kena kan? Dia ada X kan? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Tapi kenapa tak nampak? Ah, tak nampak. Dia macam separuh. Oh, terpotong eh? Ah, dia tak nampak. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Saya so, tulis kat sini lah eh. This is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, kan? 9, 10. Betul tak? 10, 9 ni saya lupa. Rasanya betul ni? Betul, betul. Ha. 10 is X. Ha. Dia baca dari kiri ke kanan dulu lah. Yang penting yang ni lah. 4, saya takut isu tukar ni. 4 and 5 ni eh. Different. IV or VI? Ha, betul. Alright. Okay. So, uh, ni, uh, ni example dia lah. I think you know this one lah eh. So, if you want to name this one, we know that... Um, this is copper CuF2. So copper is Cu2 plus. So so this is copper 2 lah. Okay. So naming dia mesti ada Roman number kat situ. 2 eh. Yes, I got a question. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I got a question. Um, yeah. Do we have to put Roman number uh, for all metal or specific? Uh, as I said, Previously, this one is for variable charge only. Yeah, this one. Ni rules yang yang kedua. Variable charge. Char metal with a more than one charge. Yang tadi lah saya sebut. Kalau if you have specific one charge only, you no need to put this one. This is rules for more than one charge according to this table. Ada banyak, ada banyak lagi. Ni contoh saja. Some metals eh. This is some metals. Okay. So the the numeric number, the Roman numeric ni uh, is according to the charge. Positive 2, positive 3, 2 is uh, following this one. Okay. Boleh eh? Faham eh? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So. Okay. So this checkpoint. Name the compound that has a chemical formula FeI3. So, apa nama dia tu? Iron 3 iodide. Iron 3 iodide. Iron 3 iodide. Okay, how about number 2? Cobalt 2 fluoride. Cobalt, okay. Cobalt 2 fluoride eh. So, you have to take note eh. Sometimes, your handwriting also is very important. Cobalt 2. <coughs> Sementara saya ingat ni saya beritahu lah eh. C-O. Eh sorry. Kenapa pula jonting ni? Okay. Uh, C-O. Macam ni. Tak sama dengan C-O. Beza eh. Sometimes biasalah. Kadang student dia tahu tapi sometimes. You punya handwriting tu. TO is cobalt, CO is carbon monoxide. Outside. Okay. So, uh, for ionic compound, we also have um, combination. Tadi binary kan? So, now we also have polyatomic compound. So, polyatomic is meaning that you have more than two lah. Okay. So, ada banyak. Maksud dalam kes kat sini, you have poly. Poly ni maksud dia banyak eh. Okay, so ni uh, some of the examples, okay, uh, ni abaikan dulu, okay, you tengok kat sini, this is the common cation, okay, and H4 plus, dia actually datang daripada ammonia, ni ammonia, NH3, bila you tambah H plus, dia jadi ammonium ion, 
And then we have uh, methyl ammonium. Methyl ammonium ni daripada ammonium kita tambah methyl. Methyl group you belajar dalam organic. Okay, ni methyl group. Kalau you tambah CH2, CH3. Dia jadi ethyl ammonium. CH2, CH2, CH3 contohlah. Ha, jadi propyl. Ha, macam itulah. Okay. So H2O plus uh, datang daripada water. H2O, you add H plus, we will become hydronium ion. And then you also have hydroxyl ammonium. Okay. So another one is com, uh, anions. Okay, anions ni ada banyak lah. Sebenarnya banyak lagi daripada ni. Ni some of the examples. Okay. So for example ni acetate. Acetate, acetate came from acetic acid. Cuka eh. Cuka. Uh, we call it as ethanoic acid according to IUPAC. Sebab dia ada dua carbon. We also have cyanide, ion, okay, hydroxide, ah, ni yang biasa kan. Okay, ni ah, geng-geng klorin ni. Nampak ni. Ah, nama lain eh, beza dia oksigen je. Saya akan explain in details later. Okay, so chlorate, chloride, hypochlorite. Ah, beza beberapa huruf je membezakan uh, naming for this one. Same goes to nitride, ah, ni geng dia. Then we have permanganate and then carbonate, bicarbonate, ah, ni yang ini biasa kita pakai yang tu saya, saya ada conteng kat sini. Okay. If you combine with sodium, carbonate combine with sodium will become sodium carbonate. Okay. Okay. Sebenarnya dia macam ni lah. Na2CO3. Ini sebab tu saya terpotong. Terpotong eh? Ya. Uh -huh. Saya terus kat sini nampak? Ah, nampak. Nampak, nampak. nampak. Tak nampak. Eh, tapi slide ni terpotong ke? Ya. Yeah. Uh -huh. Tak nampak tepi Nama-nama pun ada yang terpotong. Eh kenapa eh? Saya buka full sebenarnya. Sekejap, sekejap. Sekejap, saya pergi jam balik. Sekejap eh. Saya ingat yang saya conteng je tak nampak. Okay. Kenapa dia tak nampak? Wait ah, I present again. Ah, tiba slide saya hilang pula. Saya present balik eh. Uh, maybe I should present my entire screen. Okay, boleh nampak tak? Nampak tak muka sendiri? Okay, sekejap. So now nampak tak ni? Nampak slide tak? Nampak. Nampak. Dan sekarang nampak. nampak penuh ke nampak terpotong? Nampak, nampak penuh. Nampak penuh. Okay. nampak penuh eh? Yep. Okay. Again, uh, actually I want to show you this one. Ni yeah. uh, If you combine uh, sodium with carbonate for example, you will write as Na2CO3, right? Okay. But if you combine with HCO3, the charge is negative 1. So it will become in a HCO3 where the name is sodium bicarbonate. Bisa dengar tak? Sodium bicarbonate. Or sometimes they call it as bicarbonate of soda. Uh, pernah dengar kan? Pernah. 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 So, uh, ada kena buat kuih. Uh, untuk buat kuih tu. Okay. So sodium bicarbonate is different than sodium carbonate lah. You, you tengok kat sini je different because it consists of uh, hydrogen here. Okay. So actually bicarbonate other uh, name is hydrogen carbonate ion. Okay. Contoh macam ni. You tengok kat sini this is phosphate. When you add hydrogen, it's, it's not hydrogen it is actually H plus. The name is will become hydrogen phosphate. Same goes to HCO3. Other name is hydrogen carbonate. Okay. Okay, ni a few lah example. So sebenarnya kita ada banyak lagi eh. So uh, ni contoh lah uh, ionic compound yang with polyatomic. So ini you tahu kan sebenarnya laju je lah eh. So dia sulfate. Okay. Kalau saya laju yang perlukan explanation please interrupt me eh. Cakap je tak faham. Okay, so FeNO3-3, so NO3 is nitrate, so nitrate is positive, eh, sorry, negative one charge. 
So Fe should be positive 3 lah. So the name will become iron 3 nitrate. Okay, need another example when we combine both uh, polyatomic cation and also anion. So we have ammonium. Okay, ammonium. This is ammonium. This is carbonate. So combined together will become ammonium carbonate. Okay, nama dia lah. Okay, so here, this is the periodic pattern of polyatomic ion. Okay, uh, tadi kan you tengok the table macam banyak. Itu pun just some, some ionic compound. Eh sorry, ionic pula. Some anion or cation yang you perlu tahu kan. Kalau lain daripada tu, you kena ambil tahulah sendiri tu tak. So macam mana you nak ingat this one, yang ni eh, yang slide ni. So you kena ambil tahu, kalau nak tanya kena ingat ke, kena ingat lah. Kena ingat nama, kena ingat charge, kena ingat berapa oksigen. So how to memorize all of this? Okay, saya ada cara dia lah. So terpulang, if you want to follow or not. Okay, nak patah balik. Okay, so kat sini. So um, apa yang saya buat, the normal way to memorize this, okay. We use uh, the ATE groups as reference. Okay. So, um, sebab ni untuk uh, ion ni, biasanya untuk anion lah. So, from group 3 until group 7 je lah. Okay. So, for group 7A or group 17, uh, we have uh, ATE, ATE ni semua oxygen dia ada 3 and with negative 1 charge. Okay, basically kalau you tengok semua yang ATE mostly is with uh, 3 oxygen. It just that maybe macam ni carbonate uh, charge dia lain lah negative 2. Silicate kita jarang gunakan but dia same group so dia akan sama. And for 6A, uh, it is oxygen dia 4. Uh, kat sini je a bit different. Sama jugalah selenate, telurate ni kita jarang guna but you must know lah this one. And the charge should be negative two. Okay. And then for nitrate, yang ni yang common kita pakai. Negative one charge. But phosphate is negative three. Okay. So you memorize for the nitrate as the reference. Kenapa? Nanti saya akan tunjuk bila sebab dia dia akan follow trend. Bila you kurang satu oksigen, dia akan jadi apa? You tambah satu oksigen, dia akan jadi apa? Okay. First, okay, before we go for the uh, macam mana trend ni, so please answer this checkpoint first. Name the polyatomic ion compound for question 1A. Apa nama dia? Barium nitrate. Barium nitrate. Okay, barium nitrate. How about B? Copper to cyanide. Copper to cyanide. Hmm. You have to put the uh, Roman number, right? Copper to cyanide. How about question number two? Write the chemical formula for ammonium sulfate. Ammonium. NH4SO4. NH4. Ammonium is NH4 plus, right? Yeah. And then you have sulfate, apa? SO4 to minus. Biasa you buat ni, you buat silam macam ni kan? Ah. Ah. Dah saya tetap biasa guna ni, sudah ingat lah. And so we know that NH4, sini dua, sini satu. So this will become NH4 2 SO4. SO4 eh? Yes. Okay. Kenapa? Okay. So this is the naming for the molecular compound. Okay. For the molecular compound, Tadi ionic kan? So for this molecular compound um, Apa yang you perlu tahu um, You kena tambah Ni eh, prefix Prefix ni apa? Something yang you letak kat depan You ada prefix and suffix Suffix you letak kat belakang, prefix you letak kat depan So for the first element You akan letak nama asal dia Nama sebenar. Second element macam you buat untuk ionic, you letak IDE. So macam ni kita nak determine siapa first element, siapa second element kalau dua-dua uh, non-metal kan. So you have to follow this one lah. 
element further slap down on the predictable. Okay, follow this one. So, tengok example. Eh, sorry. For the prefix, prefix ni, for example, if you have mono for the first element, prefix mono can be used for the second but not on the first element. Okay, as for example, as the example kat sini kan. So, mono, ni prefix yang kita pakai lah. Sebab prefix is depends on the number, number of atom yang ada dalam tu. Okay. So, if one is mono, tapi kalau kat depan dia satu, we not use mono for example. CO2. Kita bagi nama dia apa? Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. Ha, carbon dioxide. Kita tak bagi nama dia mono carbon dioxide. No. Okay. Tapi kalau you letak dia kat belakang, apa di sini? Carbon, carbon monoxide. Ha, carbon monoxide. Bila dia kat belakang, dia akan jadi mono lah. Nak, nak. To determine that, okay, we know that, okay, bila mono, ada, ada satu lah kat belakang tu eh. Okay, and then you have to drop A if the name begins with a vowel. Meaning, for example, here lah. Penta, for example, you combine dengan oxide, oxygen. Kita takkan namakan dia penta oxide, we just call it as pentoxide. Okay. Sama juga uh, ni kalau E, actually mono pun sama eh. Mono, kita tak kata dia mono oxide, we drop one O. Okay, so dia akan jadi monoxide. Carbon monoxide ni kan, carbon monoxide. Okay, kalau di try, ah, tak lah. Takkan you nak buat uh, carbon dioxide jadi carbon dioxide juga kan. Ah, kalau you buang air kan, ah, ni salah lah eh, ni salah. Okay, just A ataupun yang satu yang mono. Okay, so for example SF4, we know that uh, here sulfur yang mono ada satu, tetrafluoride ada empat. Tapi sebab sulfur kat depan, so the name will become sulfur tetrafluoride. Okay. Okay, so for this checkpoint, Sebab jawapan dia dah terkeluar siap-siap. So I want you to check whether your answer is correct or not. Betul tak? Dapat sama tak dengan jawapan yang diberi ni? This one eh. Uh, H2SE dihydrogen monoselenide. Okay. NO2 nitrogen dioxide. S2F10 disulfur. Deka, 10 eh, fluoride. And H2O, saya ingat lagi ada student tanya saya, H2O apa nama dia sebelum ni kan? H2O saya cakap, nama dia water lah. <laughs> Actually water, if you search in IUPAC also, uh, the name of water are already acknowledged by IUPAC. But since you belajar kan, you belajar so of course lah we have to follow the rules. When we follow the rules of course lah. We will name it as uh, according to the rule. So, dihydrogen monoxide. Okay. Even sometimes if you search, if you google, ada siap nama dia dihydrogen oxide dia. Pun orang tahu itu water. Okay. Banyak sangat nama lah. But if you follow IUPAC, uh, the real IUPAC rules, so you can name it like this lah. Okay. Dihydrogen monoxide. So nanti boleh lah gebang kat kawan-kawan yang bukan budak sains kan. Nak minta dihydrogen monoxide. <laughs> so dia pun pening apa benda lah. Rupanya water je. Ha. Okay. So. Pukul apa eh? Kita patut habis pukul apa eh? Pukul lima kan? Minyak lima. Okay okay. Okay. Ada any question so far? Sorry hmm. saya lupa nak tanya. Ada soalan? Uh, oh. Nanti nanti kalau kita ada test, um, mm -hmm. biasanya paper tu dia akan kasih sekali ke uh, periodic table? Uh, according to the previous, uh, previous, I mean previous uh, practice, uh, we do not uh, provide the periodic table but we provide the list of element atom with the mass number. Dia punya uh, berat dia tu, gram per mole tu. Hmm. 
Ha, kita bagi macam tu je. Sebab apa? Uh, bila bagi predictable, bahaya itu adalah jawapan untuk chapter 2. Uh, sebab you tak masuk ke chapter 2 kan? Bila bagi predictable, uh, semua chapter 2 memang you boleh jawab according to the predictable. So that's why we do not provide the predictable. Jadi ada nama lah nanti? Uh, ada. Macam for example, uh, hydrogen. Uh, lepas tu dia tulis kat situ dia punya molar mass uh, 1.01 gram per mol. Fluorine apa berapa? Fluorine 35.5 gram per mol. Dia akan bagi macam tu je lah. Miss, maksudnya dia tak mention group dengan um, dia punya tu ke? Dekat tak. mana dia? Tak ada. Sebab kalau mention itu adalah jawapan. Mungkin saya cakap eh, chapter 2 nanti later you akan belajar specific on predictable. Hmm. Uh, predictable so, tu satu subtopik, satu topik untuk chapter 2 tu. You akan belajar details. So hmm. that's why kalau kita bagi predictable itu adalah jawapan. Faham? Okay, okay. So apa yang kita bagi is uh, elemen awak tu yang awak nak cari with the mass number. Mass number tak payah hafal lah. Kan? Uh, so dia dah bagi macam tu lah. Okay. Boleh? Dia faham? Faham. Uh. Boleh. So uh, dia maksudnya you nak tahu dia group apa group apa tu biasanya tu basic kot. You kena hafal at least the 21st element daripada 1 sampai 20. Macam we know that one is hydrogen and then fluorine and apa-apa-apa. At least lah flow dia punya Atomic number tu. Ha. Okay, so we proceed to nomenclature of acid. So how to name the acid. So in this case, uh, I think this one is, uh, you familiar with this. Acid, uh, just simply if you have the binary acid or yang ni tak binary lah eh. Yang HCN tu bukan binary eh. Sekejap, saya tengah mencari saya punya ni. So HCN is not binary but others are binary. Uh, you can just simply add hydrogen, okay, dengan uh, you punya anion kan. So hydrogen yang you add, we call it as hydro and then yang belakang we add IC acid. Ik acid eh. Hydrochloric acid, hydrobrom acid macam itulah. Okay. And itu yang basic. But if you have uh, oxo and ion, oxo and ion meaning that ion with oxygen. Okay, so in this case, for example, you have carbonate. Ah, tadi saya dah explain sikit kan. So ni maksudnya carbon yang ada oxygen, carbonate. And then you also have um, uh, apa ni namanya? Sulfate ni for example, two different oxo and ion. Actually, this one, benda-benda ni datang daripada S. S berapa charge dia? Kalau S saja. Sulfur. Dua kan? Dua negatif. Hmm. What is the name for S? Sulfur. Ion. Sulfur. Ion? Ion, ion. Ion sulfide. 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 You ubah je satu huruf, I, T, E, different chemical compound. Yep. Sulfide and sulfate, you ubah je huruf A, E dengan I, it will become SO4. Different compound. Okay. So in this case, that's why for naming the rules, if you have a wrong spelling, of course, memang salah. Terus salah lah. Okay, you have to take note on this one. Okay. So... Again lah, I repeat. So S without oxygen is sulfide, uh, IDE eh. Ha, ada kokoh lah kat situ. And then uh, if you have oxygen, uh, as I have mentioned previously, okay. Um, sekejap saya padam dulu. Pergabut pula tengok ni. Okay, as I've mentioned previously. Hmm, this is your reference. Sal. Okay, kan? Ah, ni yang saya nak guna balik table yang saya suruh guna tu. You ingat ni, memorize this one. Sulfate, reference dia, uh, yang ATE eh. Okay, SO4 to minus. If you remove, okay, buang one oxygen, the name will become ITE. Mm -hmm. And if you can see, the charge is still similar, negative 2. 
Okay. So, ni akan jadi IT. Same goes to this one. For group 7A or group 17 in your predictable. Chlorine, bromine or iodine. Okay. Your reference is bromine. This is your reference. Okay. So, if you remove one, in, one oxygen, okay, this is, will become bromide, ITE. If you remove another uh, oxygen here, will become hypobromide. Yang ni kekal, tambah hypo. But for bromide, ni tadi you punya reference, okay, you add one oxygen, O4, you will have to add per in front of the bromide. Bromate ni kekal, but you add per. So, these rules apply to all this one. And also, actually apply macam tadi untuk sulfate lah. Tadi kan sulfate SO4 to minus, you buang satu SO3 to minus, buang satu kat sini kan, tadi buang satu, that's why dia jadi sulfite, ITE. This is sulfate. Ah, ni yang saya cakap, you tak perlu nak oh, semuanya nak kena hafal ke susahnya. Ah. <laughs> You have to remember, um, you can memorize um, uh, secara bijak lah. Okay? So, ini cara saya. But pulang if you want to memorize uh, uh, in your way. But uh, you can use my method lah. Okay? So, uh, this one is, uh, as you can see, this one is applicable when you um, change the oxygen. But as you can see, the charge is similar negative one okay but however if you add a uh, h plus okay you may have more than one uh, ion in this case ni saya tambah eh you boleh lah nak tambah okay the original one is phosphate phosphate ion is po4 3 minus okay so po4 3 minus when you add h plus okay ke phosphate ni of course, at H plus, dia kat sini jadi H but this charge will become negative 2. Sebab you tambah satu positif kan? So, the name will become hydrogen phosphate. Okay. In this case, you still can add another H plus. Tambah lagi satu. Now, it will become H2. Tambah lagi satu kan? H2. PO4. Now, the charge will become negative 1. So, the name, you tambah je sebab this is um, molecular compound. Dihydrogen phosphate. Okay. Clear or not? Faham tak? Faham. Faham. Okay. So, uh, macam tu lah cara. So, apply untuk yang lain-lain lah. Macam tadi kan saya cakap carbonate. CO3 to minus. You add H plus uh, ke dalam ni. So, dia akan jadi H. Sorry. Sebab saya tak pakai glove. Sebab saya pakai drawing pad ni. Tak pakai glove habis ber berlain-lain. Ha. Okay, sekejap. Uh, H. Dia akan jadi H. C. Tak ada. Tak tahu. H2. Eh, P pula. Sekejap. Sekejap. Padam. H2. H2 apa? Ha, dah bagi hina ni. H2. CO3. Apa charge dia? Uh... Ah, uh, negatif. Negatif? Negatif apa? Negatif. Negatif je. Negatif. Ini dah ada negatif. Eh. Dia tambah lagi H plus. So, 
Oh, dia neutral. Ha. Jadi neutral lah. Dia dah tak jadi ion. Ha. So now it will become carbon oh, carbon acid. Oh. oh. Dia dah buka ion lah. Sama juga this one. This one eh. Ni. Sekejap eh. Sekejap eh buruk sangat lah. Macam tu conteng. Saya padam dulu. It is all link. Okay. For this one. Dihydrogen phosphate. Again, I cakap eh, if I add another H+, it will become H3 PO4 without charge. You can balance kan lah kan, tadi H+, masuk ni negatif. So, dia akan jadi H3PO4. So, what is the name for this one? Acid phosphoric acid. Yes, phosphoric acid. Okay. Ataupun uh, ini nama asid lah. Kalau dia bukan asid, dia jadi trihydrogen phosphate. Boleh juga. Tri, tri, tri pula. Tri, trihydrogen phosphate. Kalau dia asid, phosphoric acid. Okay. So tadi yang carbonate tadi, yang saya cakap carbonic acid, H2CO3 ataupun nama lain dia dihydrogen carbonate. Okay. Boleh eh? So I hope you can understand this one eh, this part. So, ni okay, I think you know this one lah. Yeah, you're going to take note this one. Um, For this case, SO3. Kita tahu CA, CA2+. Sebab dia metal group 2. Okay. SO3 is 2 minus. You punya reference is SO42 minus. This is your reference. So this is sulfate. You remove one electron, eh, sorry, one oxygen will become three. So now it will become sulfide. Okay, ITE. Eh, sorry. Ah, itulah. Ni kan? So ni nama dia. Okay, so this checkpoint again, jawapan dah ada eh. So please check, write the compound that has a chemical formula. Actually it's not write the compound lah. Saya lebih prefer name the compound, okay. Kita nak nama lah sebenarnya eh, that has a chemical formula for CaSO4. Ha, baru cakap tadi, CaSO4, so nama dia? Calcium sulfate. Sulfate, sulfate eh. Uh, may I know uh, how you name, how you spell the word sulfate? S-U-L-F-E-T-E or S-U-L-P-H-A-T-E? P-H-A-T-E. P-H-A. Okay. Uh, I, I'm not saying that, uh, I'm not saying that this kind of uh, spelling is wrong. This one is actually uh, the older way, okay, to write the spelling uh, for the sulfate, okay. Uh, if you refer to your, uh, any reference book nowadays, uh, your, I mean international reference book, eh, normally we will use uh, F sulfate, okay. But if you uh, refer to the older books, like maybe from 70s, even 80s ke, ah, dia akan agent macam ni lah. Okay. I'm not saying that this is wrong. But still, we still can accept this one lah. Okay. But I hope you can follow the trend lah for the international book. We follow uh, change to FETE. Okay. Same goes to the naming like, um, tadi apa? K. Uh, someone mentioned it is kalium. Uh, it is actually now we pronounce it as potassium. Like PB. PB. We know that it is actually plumbum, but now we call it as lead. Okay. Sama lah eh. So, okay. Now, uh, the second one, Al2, HPO43. So, this is aluminium. Hydrogen. Hydrogen phosphate. Okay. So, name the compound that has the chemical formula MgBrO2. Okay, so MgBrO2. Again, saya buatlah eh. Okay, BrO kita datang asal macam ni kan? 
BrO3 minus. So this is bromate. Bromate eh. Allah buruk eh. Sekejap eh. <laughs> Kaku tulis pakai ni. Okay. Okay. So this is bromate. Okay. You remove one. So now it will become bromide. Bromide. You remove another one, oxygen. Now it will become bromide. Hypobromide. Ah, sambung lah eh. Dia bersambung saya so tak muat. Okay. So that's why yang ni um, this one is um, BRO kan. So hypobromide lah. So magnesium hypobromide. Okay. Boleh follow eh so far? Okay, now uh, this is a uh, nomenclature of oxo acid. Acid yang ada oksigen. Tadi kita buat uh, binary kan. So yang ada uh, acid, yang ada oksigen, uh, simple je. Okay, maybe saya pergi kat sini lah. We know that, okay, ni kita bagi nama dia apa? Acid hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid, okay, hydro, then you tambah IC acid for HCl, okay. But if you put as HClO3, ending yang ATE, okay, you just change to IC. Maksudnya, dia terus jadi chloric acid. Hydro tu tak ada. Because bila ada hydro, maksudnya dia HCl without oxygen, okay. So let's say macam ni kan perchlorate kan ClO4 is perchlorate so dia akan jadi perchloric acid. Okay. Boleh faham eh? Maksudnya contoh lain lah. So we have BrO3. This is bromate ion kalau jadi acid HBrO3 so dia akan jadi bromic acid. Bromic bromic acid. Okay. Ah, this simple je lah. For those uh, ion that have ATE ending, change to IC acid. And for those that have ending with ITE, ITE ni maksudnya contoh macam ni lah. HCLO, hypo. CLO is hypo chloride. Hypochlorite. Chlor, macam je, hypochlorite kan, ion. Okay, so yang ITE ending with OUS. OUS, dia jadi hypochlorous. Hypochlorous. Macam contoh, uh, contoh you have ClO2 minus. This is chloride ion kan. So we put as HClO2 so the name will become Hypochlorous Ada hypo ke? This no. is HClO2 So yang ni nama dia is Chlorous Kan? Chlorous Acid Without hypo lah Sebab itu ending dia ITE kan. Itu asal dia CLO2 is chloride ion. So dia jadi chloride. Okay so far can you follow? Boleh ikut eh? Boleh boleh. Any question? Any question so far? Not from me. No. no. How about others? Okay. If you have any question please ask okay. Okay. Oh ni ha, rupanya hypochlorous acid tu ada kat slide tu. Okay. So these are the examples lah. Okay. The relationship between uh, ATE with uh, IC acid. Okay. You just tukar je nitrate, nitric acid. Acetate, acetic acid, sulfate. Ah, uh, Sulfate ni je a bit different lah. Dia tak jadi uh, sulfatic. <laughs> Dia jadi sulfuric. Kat sini je a bit different. Okay. And the rest lah. Okay. And last we have nomenclature for hydrated ionic compound. Ni kita patah balik pergi ionic. 
Okay, ni special compound. Ionic that have water. Hydrated eh, bukan hydrogen eh, water eh. So, hydrate, <coughs> hydrate, hydrate ni maksudnya ada water. So, water of hydration often driven off, okay, by heating. Bila you panaskan, water tu akan hilang. For example, here we have COCl2. This is cobalt 2 chloride. But now we have 6H2O. Again, dia macam combination, you put uh, uh, the name for ionic and also for the molecular compound. Because you have uh, water, you have to put name uh, with the prefix. Uh, we have six, so six prefix the hexa. Okay, so the name will become cobalt 2 chloride hexahydrate. Ada enam eh. And we also have uh, for water, uh, ada juga yang ada prefix half. So half here, the name is hemi. Okay, calcium sulfate hemihydrate. Ha, just tambah je uh, hydrate tu apa. Okay, boleh ikut eh so far this one? Boleh. Hmm. Boleh. Okay, previously ada student tanya, Miss, uh, uh, is it necessary to put dot in between COCl2 and 6H2O? Yes, you have to put that dot. So, if you do uh, using your handwriting, make sure the dot tu is clear enough. Kalau you rasa macam pen ke pencil you tak berapa clear, you macam bulatkan sikit. Nampaklah dot tu eh. Okay. Nak membezakan lah. Uh, itu adalah satu structure yang, satu compound yang sama. Dia bukan macam different COCl2, different water. Sebab kalau tak ada dot nanti kita ingat oh water is molecule, another molecule. Okay. So the dot, the dot here is very important. Okay. For example here. Uh, name a compound uh, that has chemical formula of CuCl2 to H2O. So this is copper to chloride dihydrate lah. Okay, ni untuk naming. Uh, again, how to write. So this is magnesium bromide and then you have hexahydrate. Biasa kita buat yang ni dulu. Okay, for ionic. Kita isi dulu untuk ionic. Sorry. Yang ni isi dulu untuk ionic. And then this is you punya hexahydrate lah. Uh, baru you tambah untuk uh, water. Okay. Yang ni eh. Make sure dot tu kena buat. Okay. So these are the examples. The difference between hydrate compound and with anhydrous. Anhydrous meaning that without water. Okay. Dia dah jadi two different compound lah. So if you have uh, this, the color also a bit different than this one. Okay. Macam ni copper kan, biru. But for copper sulfate without water, the pale, pale blue lah. Almost to white colour. Okay, sebab yang bagi colour blue is from the Cu2+. Plus. Hmm. Okay? Okay. So, checkpoint 8. Write the molecular formula for the compound mercury 2 nitrate, monohydrate and manganese 2 bromide tetrahydrate. Okay, mercury 2 nitrate, monohydrate. Macam mana nak tulis? Mercury 2 nitrate. Mercury 2 nitrate. Okay. Um, mercury apa? Mercury? HG. Bila dia mercury 2, so bila dia HG? 2 plus. 2 plus. Right? Okay. Uh, nitrate? NO3. Thanks. Mana berhati-hati. NO3 minus. Ada yang dalam kereta ke tu? Ke ada yang tengah buka radio? Di <laughs> depan dia ubah hati-hati. Ha. Okay. Nitrate. NO3 minus. So. Hmm. Dia nak apa? Monohydrate. Okay. First you combine lah kan. HG. NO3. <laughs> right. And then. Put dot here, monohydrate, so ada satu kan. Ah, H2O lah. Okay, how about manganese 2 bromide tetrahydrate? MN. Manganese is MN. So maksudnya kat sini dia jadi MN. 
H2O. 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 H2O eh? Hmm. Ya kita check betul ke? Ya yeah, betul. Okay. Okay. <laughs> By the way uh, sebab kita tengah cerita pasal teori ni. Previously ada student saya tanya dia ada di dalam slide sebelum ni. Uh, Mercury 1, uh, this is Mercury 2 right? Mercury 1, it is HG2, 2 plus. Okay. Uh, kalau you check even slide sebelum ni ada dekat table depan depan tu. This is Mercury 1. Dia <coughs> akan ada H2. Yang ni kan bila 2, 2 plus dia end up dia akan jadi 1 lah balik kan? Uh. So uh, this is Mercury one. You please refer to your previous slide lah sebentar sebab saya teringat ada Mercury kat sini. Sebab ada student tanya sebelum ni. Is it uh, correct a Mercury one is like this? Betul lah yang betul eh. Dia unique sikit lah. Dia tak boleh nak HG plus. Okay so any question so far? No. No. Okay, that's all. Uh, I think we have finished our session here. Madam. Yes. Nanti uh, selesai ada nak share ke? Sorry? Slide ni. Madam nanti ada share dengan kita orang ke? Uh, I'm using the same slide actually. Uh, that's why I'm asking you to print out your uh, PDF. Sama kan slide kita? Or you nak the part yang saya conteng-conteng tu ke? Eh tak apa tak apa. Okay okay. If you want this, actually I'm recording this session. If you nak, I will post this video to you. Ah nak? Okay. Nak, nak tengok balik? Ah. Nak nak? Ah nak video ni juga. Okay sekejap. <laughs> uh, sementara tu saya stop recording dulu lah eh. Okay.